it's Alex, your boy from the West Coast, Panthers fan. Uh, a, a1 for Panthers. Um, tough game today, real tough. Um, like I talked about in the podcast um, on Friday, you got when when you're down twenty one seven. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to really see if we can move the ball down the field, score on offense. And as you could see, when it comes to stopping the run, that's what teams are going to focus on against us. And they're going to bait Sam Darnold to throw the football. And guess what? Didn't really show up today. Tough, tough day in the red zone. Um, still going to keep pounding, fellas. All right. Thank you, guys. Keep pounding. Man. All right. Let's, let's keep going. There's really nothing else to say today, Panther fans. The offensive line got fucking dominated, and the defensive line got fucking dominated. We just got we just got so butt fucked up front today. It wasn't even funny. I'm disgusted. I'm sick. I'm just. I don't know. What to, I don't even know what to say. But hey, Sam Darnold looked all right, I guess. But yeah, we just got butt fucked in front. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rah, rah, rah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> oh, man, he's perfect. perfect. He, he That's all. Great. He's been listening to the show a long time if he hit that. <laughs> uh, dude, saying butt and fucked one after the, the next always makes me laugh so much. <laughs> I like, yeah, dude, we're going with butt fucking. Like, what? In front all right, that's of crazy. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's the um, same. Next call. Uh, <laughs> So, C3, is JD864. Uh, this is my second time calling in. I understand if you guys don't play it. Um, I always but I also stop wanted to add, I also wanted to add to what I was saying on uh, my previous call. Moving forward, I would like to see, I think uh, we're going to see, and I would also like to see a more balanced attack from the offense. Because today, the run game was stymied on, I was just looking at the stats, and like it, it, it was bad. I think Foreman had ten carries for ten yards. So you, you you're not gonna win games like that. And we've seen uh, previous games where our run game carried the offense. So I think moving forward, especially with what Donald did today, he was Donald was was pretty uh, he was pretty on point. Remy, do you really have to do all that? <laughs> yep. He knows you're making a cat call. Uh, dude. Like my, my kids, they choose the be- the best time to start making noise for absolute no reason. But um, I, I like it. I like what I saw out of Darnold. Um, offensive line chose a bad time to have a bad game. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think yeah, going forward, we can we we can me. still make some noise. Uh, get more of a balanced attack out of the offense. Uh, Darnold actually looked uh competent and shit. Uh, he threw for over 200 yards. Some of those yards came in garbage time. But yeah, uh, moving forward, I think I think if, if you get more of a balanced attack from the O, uh, the Panthers are still in position to make some noise. Like I said, disappointing loss, but it is what it is. Win some, you lose some. Uh, hopefully, the guys learn from it, get back after it, uh, stay hungry. Thanks for the call, JD. You know what? One of these is you can just tell the temperature and the tone of people's like outlook in life. So at the end of the day, he's got like all these, he's got some good things to say, some bad things to say. But then when you have a loss, he's like, it's a loss. At the end of the day, Mm -hmm. you got to move on. And then we're probably going to get a call in two seconds who has the same kind of points, which is to make the same points about the line, the lose, this and this. At the end of the day, go, we got to blow up the whole world. You know, like they just come yeah. to two completely in conclusions about what the meaning of the same event is. Uh, let's keep going with the calls. Tony Cody CK and the Bat Daddy beat off boy toy. This team, <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Overall, and the question <laughs> is, we should keep Steve Wilkes as permanent head coach as an answer. <laughs> that was crazy. This team was out mm-hmm. physical today. Out coach today. I'm just out play today. Panthers are just not that good. Need new coaches, new roster. And I tell you what, I think you start with the linebackers. When a team is running on you, which the Steelers were stopping the run, they put eight, nine guys in the box stopping the run because they have good linebackers. Panthers can't stop the run because they don't have good linebackers. Need to get new linebackers. So, gentlemen, what are your thoughts? Bye bye. That was a great call. That's right. It was. Did he call me the bat, the bat daddy, the beat off boy toy? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. It's like the greatest compliment you've ever it had. It was, yeah. Uh, dude, people the, really love us, man. People giving us nicknames and shit. Dude, that's the, awesome. Uh, he's right about the what is the, I've been saying this every time I'll see somebody out. I like because I got this one watering hole I go to. There's like three or four people now that listen to our show and they come up to me and they'll talk. And they're, you know, they're just, are they, are you excited? That's the first thing everybody, you know, are you excited about this team? And I go, we're just not good. You know, like it's hard to get except we, we're just not a good team. Overall, we've got some good players, but we're not a good team. And there's just a lot of weaknesses around the board. And he's right about the linebackers, man. Like you can't, we got Shaq, who is a, a quintessential, like he's just whelming. He's not overwhelming. He's not underwhelming. He's just whelming. And then you don't even know the other dude's names. Littleton, right? Who are they? Actually, I haven't heard hey. our linebacker names. It's, it's, uh, Luvu. I guess you would say uh, Luvu, Le- right? Littleton, say Brandon Smith. Yeah, Littleton, Thompson, and Luvu. And uh, every once in a while, Brandon Smith. Hey, okay, dude, look so- at this. I didn't look at this. I didn't see this. Nirvash said. Luke Kickley called out the linebackers on the home broadcast of the game. Mm. The I, I'm a, I'm a fur. We this this coaching staff needs Luke Kickley. It does. I'm telling you. I, I know yeah. that you have to be born to be a coach or whatever, but the way that de- that Luke knows the intangibles on where to be and how to play and, and what to do when, man, I really just think that our our, our coaching needs his expertise, man. Do you know that Wilkes might give us, though, if you hire Wilkes, that might be a, the best way to get Luke Keekley in on the staff. Oh, no doubt. And no here's doubt. another thing is that you guys, uh, one of the callers brought up offensive coordinator for the Lions, which is Ben Johnson. But here's the thing is, Deuce Staley is assistant head coach. So he's listed as like, the highest other than anybody when it comes to, but it's, it's assistant head coach and running backs coach. Deuce Staley is the number one coach on the offensive staff. And then it goes offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson offensive. But if you look at the Lions staff, could you imagine a world where the Panthers staff looks similar to this in some ways in the future? If Wilkes was the coach, because look, they've got Mark Brunel as a quarterback's coach. Former yeah. player, what Dan Campbell, former player, right? I watched uh, then he's got Deuce Lux. Staley in there, Mark, uh, Mark Brunel, Antoine Randall L is a wide receiver coach for them. He was a player, all of these dudes were players in the league, it's a lot of players. And maybe you get in, I wonder if that's going to be trendy now. Saturday, head coach Dan Campbell, but and Tony, now- you didn't want Ken Dorsey because you're like, oh, well. He has Josh Allen. He was a so bad how, player, though. But how is this, this is not a one-year wonder? Like, all it takes is one good year, and then people are like, oh, yeah, the Lions offense is really good, so I want that guy. Why? Like, No, I'm not we, saying that they're great. I'm just saying like if you a, look at the comp, I'm not saying that I want to be the Lions or that they're even that great. I'm just saying the composition of their coaching staff has a lot of former players. Right. More right, so right. than you would have seen in – past years like now or maybe i'm just to the point where i know these players where i'm old enough where i watched and had and i had antoine Rel- part, and yeah. randall yeah. on my coaching staff i mean on my fantasy team i was gonna say yeah we drafted them in fantasy <laughs> yeah so i mean yeah. i think that's what it is i had do staley on my fantasy team in the past so i just i'm just sitting here going now thinking about the iteration of a uh, luke keekley maybe one day who would be Maybe you have a Greg Olson one day. I mean, now I know he's in broadcasting or somebody. I don't know. Just I want to know. No, I hear what you're saying, and it would be cool to have some pants to come back in and and coach for us. That would be cool. But I mean, I, I don't know. We're, we're if we're gonna do this thing where it's like, ah, okay, not Steve Wilkes. Which, by the way, I'm not out on Steve Wilkes. Like, Me I'm either. not saying Me that either. I am. No. Yeah, I still I don't think, think he's a reasonably be. good choice right yeah. now. And and like I said, I think that if if he continues to put up decent performances, I think he has to be in the conversation, like Kev was saying. Um, but at the same time, like if we're gonna go out and get a coordinator, like I want to know why we're signing him. What kind of offense does he intend to implement? 
that would make this team better or different than it was. You know, and I'm not. I don't just want to jump on the next, the next trend. You know, of oh, yeah. it's the Lions OC or the Philadelphia Eagles OC. or Ken Dorsey. So can can I ask you then the what con- kind of? They're all part of the conversation. Okay. Can can I ask you then, Cody? What kind of an offense would you want a new head coach to come in and build? Like, what's your vision? Oh, you want to have a? This may be a Tuesday question. Something for us to think about for Tuesday. Yeah. But like, yeah, if boy. if you have a head coach come in, what kind of offense do you want them to put forth for Carolina, and that that we have the ability to do with the players that we have? That's a good Tuesday. To be question. honest, I think that we can a little bit like what Shanahan runs. I don't mind being a run first football team. But one of the reasons why they wanted to upgrade away from Jimmy Garoppolo is to consistently hit those deep passes that their offense inevitably schemes open because they run the ball well and so smart. I think that would be fantastic. Um, I'm also not opposed to a West Coast style offense if we do have the right personnel to be able to do so. Either way, it means that you have to continue and bolster this offensive line so that you can run whatever kind of offense you need to, to, to pass the ball effectively, to run the ball effectively. I, I really think it all starts with the trenches, and that's what we need to do, continue in, to invest on this offensive line. And Kevin won me over, your illegitimate son, Tony, because he had the recommendation earlier in the year, trade Taylor Moten, put Cade Mays at left guard, Put Brady Christensen at right tackle and get some kind of trade value for Taylor Moten. You ain't getting Dude. none now. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Maybe right. not. I, I think Taylor Moten is the weak link on our offensive line this year, and I've been saying. Well, that. you know, what I mean, he's getting later in his career. You know, like he's not that old. Like, not that old, but he's not young either. I mean, he's yeah, been around I mean, here since yeah, 2017, right? He's not not young, 2018, so, yeah. somewhere in there. And I um, think that we're wasting. Christensen's tackle abilities. No, nah, that's all interesting. I would be think I'd be very curious to see if uh, Wilkes came back, if Al Holcomb came back. And when you talked about the offense that you wanted us to build, uh, Greg, there's only one single answer, and that is one where Cam Newton is the quarterback, <laughs> and we have two <laughs> tight ends that are running out. I mean, yeah. I'm ready. I think what we should do is bring a Rod Chudzinski in as head coach next year and Cam Newton back as a quarterback and just relive the old days. That's what I want. That's the offense I want, the one from 2015. or The Chud offense was fun, even though we didn't win a lot of games in that. It was a fun offense with the two. Jeremy Shockey, yeah. Greg Olson. Beating mm-hmm. ass with Cam Newton. Mm. That's the offense I want. I miss mm-hmm. Cam. Next call. Me too. Hey, Panthers uh, fans. I just wanted to say, obviously, that was a pretty terrible game, but uh, hang in there. Uh, just a few quick notes I want to go through. Um, yes, obviously, though, they did look awful. I'm not going to point out the obvious. I think that you all, you four, you kind of just covered everything. But ultimately, I think what happened here was that the Panthers started to plan – to play against the Steelers, and then the Steelers planned. They kind of predetermined. They knew what we were going to plan for, effectively, and then just countered it. And what we should have gone into this game doing is instead of we should have known that okay, they know we're going to be running the ball a whole bunch. Well, let's go into the game and flip this a little bit, and and you know come out with with uh, you know going tackling it in the air. But ultimately, you know, just terrible all around. And they did have some really good passes over to, like, D.A. Moore's picking up some good yards. <laughs> That's how we should have come out the gate instead of trying to cram it down their throats in the run game. We should have, I don't know, they, they just did a better job planning against us with this whole thing. Anyway, um, hopefully the Bucks lose today. We'll see. All right. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. 